Bro, I swear to you, I always fucking popped a fucking blood vessel at that scene, Holmes. Seriously, though, I couldn't believe all that goodness I just witnessed. Orale, my favorite part was easily when they finally showed. Hey, hey, hey. What up? What it do? What it do? Oh, great. This fucker. What it do there, boss man? What y'all talking about? We're talking about Spider Man, fool. Hey, hey! Shush, shush! I didn't see it yet. Ah, no, no, wait, oh, come on! Come on now, dog. I'd like you to do me a favor and get your shit together. Bro, fuck you. I've been busy as hell. Uh, I've been really busy. Look at me. I'm a virgin. Boy, don't be acting like you know I haven't been busy. Boy, I'm gonna come over there and slap the shit out you. Who? Who are you gonna slap? You, boy, boy what are you talking about? Acting like I ain't gonna talk to you. You're talking to you. Dumb, 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 hey, hey! Both of you! Knock it off! Bro, this dude is worse than a kid in gym class that goes all out on dodgeball. Alright, shut up. I got one more video to film for the year. And then after that, you want to see the movie again? Yeah, sir, skip. Yeah, fool, hurry up, let's go! I bet. I'm gonna get right into it. Oh no, so Chancho, you're the bitch. Suck my ass, you hippie fuck. What is up, my people? Welcome back to the last video of this new edition that I like to call the NTD Awards, where I named some of the top in music in all 2021. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell as well to always keep notified of my newest content. And today is the video, is the finale. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the top 25 albums of 2021. If you had watched my previous video that I released before this, my top 25 singles, I'm going to have the link right above and right down below. I'm going to pretty much take it away the same way how I did there. When I'm on the bottom of the list, I'm going to be pretty brief. And then as I progress higher into the ranks, I'm going to add more detail on the record. Before I list out my 25 albums of the year, I want to mention that these picks are not affected by my ratings. Of course, if you've been keeping on my channel, you're probably gonna see some of the highest percentages on here. This is strictly a list that I make that not only think that are the best records of the year, but are personally my favorite. The ones that I listen to the most, the ones that I adore the most, the ones I think they have the most great fundamental work when it comes to sound production. And without further ado, let's finish the year strong. Let's get into it. Number 25, I'm gonna pick the funk duo Extravaganza, Bruno Mars and Anderson Pax, Silk Sonic and Evening with Silk Sonic. Number 24 is a very delicate folk record from Sufjan Stevens and Angelo D'Augustine on Beginner's Mind. Love how the two went their way to make this record by going off of every other movie that they would watch together each night. Number 23 is the experimental pop duo Black Dress is Forever in Your Heart. Was very happy to see the two join back together to come out with this record. I love the metal aesthetics that the electro pop duo adds into their music. Number 22, we have Bleachers, aka Jack Antonoff, Take the Sadness Out of Saturday. Love a lot of the rock pop tracks on this album. I think Jack does it again and comes out with another wonderful piece. It's just you can't go wrong with Jack. You can never go wrong. 21 spots got to go to James Blake's Friends That Break Your Heart. Track to track singing increases with so much flourishness and beauty. Number 20 pick, I'm going to have to give it to South Memphis MC's Lucas. Why look up? God's in the mirror. Easily think that Lucas is one of the most underrated underground rappers in the game currently. Loved a lot of the sample choices on here. I loved a lot of the beat selections. The features brought a lot of characteristics to the album. Number 19 is going to go to the UK's Little Sims. Sometimes I might be introvert. Sims delivers again delivers another amazing hip-hop record with a lot of good conscious hip-hop on here highly recommend 18 goes to hardcore punk bands turnstile glow on loads and loads of adrenaline boosting fun on here i love the twist of adding some dream pop elements into their hardcore punk sounds turnstile just makes a kick-ass record kick-ass it is kick Ass. Number 17, we got folk artist Yola. Stand for myself. Easily one of the best folk artists to come out this year. Easily one of the best folk records to come out this year. Lovely performance, lovely instrumentals. I love so many of the cuts on here. And I love this album cover too, just to add that into it. Number 16 spot is going to go to New York based rappers Wiki's Half God. Wiki showcases some of his best lyricism to this day. I really love these dark and gray color palettes that he chooses for these beats. There's also some compassionate and compelling narratives from Wiki. I love a lot of these songs. I love a lot of the themes that he's sharing about love, about the streets. It's amazing. Number 15 is gonna go to Black Country New Roads for the first time. Post-rock band Black Country New Road comes out with this record very early into this year and introduces some lovely spoken word on top of some rock and guitar distortions and even some gorgeous harmonious background vocals. Very clean, very fresh production, very beautiful instrumentation. Love the ideas that the band come up with this record. It's amazing. 14, I got another UK rapper this time. It is Slow Ties Tyron. I love how Slow Ties separates this LP into two separate parts 
when the first part really feels like just a bunch of hard hitting trap bangers. Love a lot of the hard hitting cuts on here, especially with the songs 42 Smoke, Cancelled with Skepta, and Masa with ASAP Rocky. But even more, I think I really enjoyed playing the disc 2 part of this record, where Slow Tie slows down the tempo a little bit, gets a little bit more melodic and a little bit more emotional, a little bit more personal. Has even more great features coming out to this record, such as Dominic Fike and Denzel Curry, and even the song Feel Away with James Blake and Mount Kimby. Overall, I really think Slow Tie outdone himself when it comes to adding the variety of different sounds and hip-hop tracks on here and to me Tyron transfers a lot of the momentum that the LP before this came out generated with nothing's great about Britain number 13 yes it's gonna go to floating points with Pharaoh Sanders and the London Symphony Orchestra promises I love the continuous loop that they use for the album and then they each track they add more new sounds and aesthetics to them it's a very gentle and predominantly classic project and studying what really goes into the sounds is very interesting it's just the subtleties and the small things that really add so much character to the touch. 12, it's gonna go to Arca's Kick 2. Now I do understand this is kind of an unpopular pick when it comes to the other three records that came out following this one. Arca 2 doesn't nearly reach the amount of hype of experimentation that the others records do by any means. But I do think that Arca does create something so groundbreaking for the reggaeton genre and especially something so groundbreaking for the experimental genre with the rest of the records. I just think this record from Arca is very fun, it's very creative, the production is prestigious, and by fact, I really believe that Arca did something revolutionary for the reggaeton genre. Number 11 goes to hip hop group Brock Hampton. Roadrunner, new light, new machine. The boys don't disappoint. They come out with bangers on bangers on bangers on bangers on bangers. Love how bright and new day a lot of these beats really come into. I really love what the features add as well. Brock Hampton just keeps proving on to be a force to be reckoned with and will continue on into producing and creating more, more qualitative hip hop. Top 10, top 10, top 10, here we go. Number 10 goes to Injury Reserve by the time I get to Phoenix. This was a very anticipated record, especially with the unfortunate death of one third of the member of Injury Reserve, Step of Jake Groggs. It even gives to what seemed his goodbye verse in the song Knees, which this song and a lot of the record induce some haunting experimentation. All the way when it comes to glitch, noise, all the different traits that really go into experimentation are here. And I really think the group really outdoes themselves, especially after having something so traumatic happen to them. Richie drops some great bars all the way through this record as well. Not only does it sound so captivating, but the spoken word presented makes a highly intimidating intensity in your face. For the number 9 pick, I'm gonna have to place JPEG Mafia's LP. This LP, no pun intended, packs the widest selection of unique cuts from JPEG, picking you light as numerous elements of lo-fi, trap, experimentation, rock, and electronic sounds on here. Flows are ridiculous on here. I really love how he shoves it in your face without warning. JPEG just continues to build on his skills as a rapper and a singer, songwriter, and producer. One of the most skilled in hip hop and easily one of my most loved artists in hip hop. Eight is gonna have to go to Call Me If You Get Lost by Tyler the Creator. This is a great throwback hip hop record when it goes, it feels like the 2010 mixtape vibe. Tyler continues to carry all the way when it comes to production schemes on here and still out does himself and still super prestigious all the way through. Brings out some of the most qualities with these features on here, such as with NBA Youngboy on What's Your Name. Running Up brings a lot of hype to the record. I really love the song Rise as well. Seven is gonna have to go to UK post-punk band Idols Crawler. Jaw-dropping, harrowing, devastating. Joe's writing with these songs just really reached the soul on this one. Bringing on producer Kenny Beats for this record, I really feel like added a really nice flair to it. You really wouldn't think a hip hop artist like this would be attached and collabing with this kind of band, but I love it. Some of the best tracks in here go with such as the devastating track, The Beach Time Ballroom, Crawler, Car Crash, and even MTT420RR. Overall, I love the conceptions on this record. I love the aesthetics of post-punk music on here. May not be the best or one of my most favorite adrenaline boosting records, but I really think the band comes out with something that really does sound different. And I think this was a record that they really needed to add to their discog, and I'm really glad that they did. Six spot goes to Synth Pop Group, Magdalena Bay's Mercurial World. Cannot express how much I love this record. It is such a pack of fun and sweet synth pop aesthetics on here. 
the dance cuts on here are just so groovy, feel so disco-y, feel so 90s and even a little bit of 80s in there. The production seems seamless on here. I really love where they go from, from front to back with the tempoing and with the feels on here. With this record, Magdalena Bay is easily a group that's on my top radar and a group that I'm going to be keeping up with for a while. Top five, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. The top five albums of 2021. Number five is going to go to Blues the color blue. How can you make such a record when you go off a of track by track always doing something metaphorically with the color blue and it doesn't get old. It just gets more new and fresh. This is easily one of the best conscious rappers in the game right now. I really love what Blue did with this record. I really love the sample selection on these beats. I really love the lyricism that Blue delivers bar for bar. This is just seriously a record I do not ever get sick of playing. And this is a record I can confidently say is my hip hop record of the year. Number four. Yes, it is him. Mr. Porter Robinson's Nurture. You want to feel good about yourself. You want to love yourself. You want to let out that negative energy. You want to let all that shit that's really dwelling inside of you, those demons that are really pulling you down into the abyss. You play this shit right now, you motherfucker. Some of the immersive cuts in here are just come off so cute, so good vibe feel. It's just, it's just beautiful. So beautiful. I really think the intro lifelike really brings the listener into a very calming, soothing, it's okay, I'm here breathe that kind of feeling and you really just feel the wind blow right into you you hear the birds chirping you really feel one with nature at this point then gets into the track look at the sky that gets into this what i like to look as the ultimate anime intro from porter robinson such a great dancey track from him i love how popping and energetic this song really gets it really wants to get the listener going Along with the songs Musician, Something Comforting, Do Re Mi Fa So La Ti Do, Unfold. And you can't forget my favorite single on here, Wind Tempos. How is this song even real? How is this real, my guy? Oh. The pressure relieving sonic beauty from this song is unmatched. Porter Robinson has absolutely evolved with this new record and I really think burst out of his cocoon and really let his wings flourish and let the beauty really fall out of his music. Top three. Number three spot is gonna go to Lingua Ignotus. Sinner, get ready. This is easily one of the most devastating, distressing, and beautiful records to come out all year. Linga goes into this record conceptually with words about her faith, about her pain. I love how Lingua turns her spoken word of her faith in the song Man is Like a Spring Flower. Entering this race of instrumental with these jangling subtleties, dramatic strings, darkening atmospheres, and harmonious singing, I'm left feeling absolutely amazed. I'm stunned. I'm stunned with this record. How you can make something so new and bold with classical music with including some industrial nuances and it's an extreme aesthetics. Going from song to song on the record, you're really just like jaw dropped and you just have, you don't even know how to feel. You don't even know how to feel. You're so shocked with the motion of how Linga pours out with some of these vocal earrings on here. How compelling that devastation of heroism really compels the listener is I don't even know. I don't even know. Like, you're left speechless. I am left speechless with this record. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think a lot of these records on here can definitely be the number one. I think a lot of these records that I listed out so far are some of the most prestigious, pristine records to come out all year. And I really think that Lingua and Nota's record is definitely worth noting on that end. But we're going to have to go to number two. What I had a record and I did enjoy more and I found even more breathtaking. Mr. Laika's the perfect mind yes if you are in tune with the channel guys you know that the perfect mind was my first ever perfect score i gave onto the channel immediately playing the first track like moon reflected sun on here fear like a just grabs the listener by the neck screaming in distortion one on here and you're just left just like, and all of a sudden it goes away and it feels like you're outside and it's snowing and you just hear these French whispers come right into your eardrums and you don't even know what's going on. You can't even understand the beauty to come. I really love what Laika really turns into this record of her journey of transitioning her gender. Going into the two thirds of the record is where she's really feeling that pain of not being able to truly flourish into her true being. What she does with the organic instrumentation on here is just so jarring and devastating and it's just painful. Laika really tries to just pull the listener into how she feels, really tries to give the listener the full personal perspective of how she is feeling in here. 
and it's scary. But then finally getting that relief when she finally gets to reach the procedure and then she becomes her true being. Storms in an army of doves and you really feel like all that pressure is lifted off your chest. That's the energy that she's displaying on here. There's really not enough praise I can really give to Dear Laika on this record. Just so much great qualities and characteristics on here. I really love how she expresses herself on this record. Productively, I really love the choices of sound that she goes with this record. It's a motion picture, one that I recommend to everybody if you're willing to give it a try. Here we go, concluding the NTD Awards. I am awarding for the number one album of the year to the one, the only, Miss Olivia Rodrigo's Sour. Nothing, and I mean nothing, has got me playing this record over and over and over and over and over and over, over again as much as Olivia does. This has to be some of the best rock pop cuts to come out all year, and respectfully so. The numbers don't lie, the numbers don't lie, but in my perspective, the numbers don't always say everything. I think in this situation though, the numbers don't lie. I love where Olivia pours her heart out into this breakup and really shares her perspectives on what she's feeling during this relationship. All the melancholy, all the masochism, all the devastation that's really going through Olivia's mind and soul throughout this breakup. Love the way she displays her emotion on each of these songs and what she's really going through in these phases and all these stages and through this breakup. Easily starting with Brutal and really how she really shares and how she's really in that phase. It's like, I don't give a fuck, fuck everything, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Then that pain finally settles in and you really hear her pour her heart out when it comes from Trader and Driver's License. With very little help when it comes to the writing and production schemes of it, when it's really mainly just Olivia and Daniel Negro really going off of this album. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the hype is real for Olivia. The hype is real. I really think that this girl is going to start dropping some really eyebrow raising records in the future. As long as she stays true to herself, stays independent when it comes to her notions and ideas conceptually with her music and her writing, I really think the sky's the limit for this girl. Her performance is excellent on here. Of course, I don't think all the cuts on here are perfect, but again, when it comes to the songs on here and the record as a whole, I really do love this record the most and any more on this list. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes my top 25 albums of the year. Before I end the video, guys, I just want to thank everybody who's been on this journey with me ever since I started in October. You have no idea how much I appreciate all you guys for the feedback, for the views, for your lovely thoughts, good or bad. It helps me so much and it really makes me feel good and really makes me feel confident about this doing this channel is how much you guys believe in me. And I thank you for that. Starting next year, I'm going to be a new fucking man on a whole new fucking level coming at this shit way harder than you ever thought I ever could. Now if y'all excuse me, I'm gonna go see the new Spider-Man movie. Catch you next year. Deuces.